from a brutal cheap shot after the final bell to all hell breaking loose. These are the biggest meltdowns in UFC history. Here's a question I'll bet you've never heard. What does a UFC fighter and a toddler have in common? Surprisingly, more than you'd imagine. For starters, they both take sudden naps. Well, the reasons aren't the same. The fact of the matter is, they both get put to sleep suddenly. On the other hand, there's the more obvious comparison. Toddlers and UFC fighters love throwing hissy fits. Let's face it, a grown man in what looks like a diaper who cries about losing is basically a toddler. With that said, this toddler, I mean Paul Daly, really knows a thing or two about hissy fits. Back in the day, Daly was one of the most interesting characters in mixed martial arts. It wasn't that he was great, because he definitely wasn't, but he did have that one-punch knockout power and one hell of a temper to go along with it. Those two traits alone made Daly must-watch TV in the early 2010s. At UFC 113, at the end of a bout with Josh Koscheck, Daly proved in the worst way possible why he was must-watch TV. As the final bell rang after Koscheck spent three rounds smothering Daly, Daly did the unthinkable. Just as Koscheck turned his back to return to his corner, Daly wound up and sucker punched him in the face. Well, the joke was on Daly, because just like the fight, Daly barely landed. Even when Koscheck wasn't looking, Daly still couldn't tag him. Immediately, the referee stepped in and asked Daly what everyone was thinking. Paul, are you kidding me? Guess who else had the same thought? Dana White. With that one cowardly punch, Daly punched his ticket out of the UFC. After the fight, reporters asked Daly the obvious question. Why? Daly had this unbelievably stupid response. During the fight, I said, when this is done and when I get up, I'm gonna hit you. I don't think he believed me. I stick to my word. So, you punched him because you're a man of your word? Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Paul Daly. He may be a cowardly cheap shot artist, but at least he's not a liar. Do you know who is a liar, though? Brock Lesnar. For the longest time, when asked about his potential steroid use, Lesnar vehemently denied the allegations. Bro, besides actually failing PED tests, all you have to do is watch Lesnar's post by Meltdown from UFC 100 to see evidence of steroid use. Lesnar's actions were simply roid rage. With the third most pay-per-view buys ever, UFC 100 was a landmark event for the promotion. Michael Bisbing, Georges St. Pierre, Mark Coleman, Dan Henderson, and John Jones all fought on this card. But the main title bout of the card was a rematch between Frank Mir and Brock Lesnar. Just one year earlier, Mir submitted Lesnar in the first round. Needless to say, Lesnar was hell-bent on revenge. As it turned out, Lesnar got himself that revenge, via a TKO in the second round. But what does it say about Brock when the thing that fans remember most most about that fight was how he acted after the win. After smashing Mir out, Lesnar ran up to the camera still seething and foaming from the mouth, spat at the camera, threw his mouthpiece, and ran back up to Mir as if to continue the beating. Then to top it off, he went on his now infamous post-fight rant where he berated Bud Light and said he may climb on top of his wife that evening. Classic Lesnar stuff. Although it wasn't because of a loss, we think it still qualifies as a complete meltdown. Even Joe Rogan admitted that Lesnar freaked him out during the post-fight interview. Later on that evening, someone must have had a chat with Lesnar, because he changed his tune quite a bit. In the post-fight press conference, he said, I'm truly sorry for the way I acted. It was an embarrassment. Yeah, someone definitely spoke with Lesnar, and he went on to say, I'm not too picky with beer, people. I'll drink anything. Tonight, I'm going to be drinking Bud Light. You know you've had a meltdown when you're publicly apologizing to a beer company. And when it comes to public apologies, you know who's somewhat of an expert? Greg Hardy. Obviously, for all the wrong reasons, Hardy, the ex-NFL star turned MMA fighter, made headlines in 2014 for his appalling domestic violence actions. And when he joined the UFC in 2018, fighters were licking their chops for a shot at Hardy. One of the first few fighters to take their chance at Hardy was Juan Adams. For Adams, the fight was personal. Turns out, Juan's mother was a victim of domestic violence. Unfortunately, the fight didn't go the way any anyone wanted it to go. Barely a minute into the first round, Hardy unleashed a torrent of unanswered punches on Adams, who appeared unable to defend himself, and was desperately clinging on for a single leg takedown. The ref gave Adams plenty of opportunities to better his position, but he didn't. The ref called the fight and saved Adams from any further undue punishment, but Adams didn't see things that way and was devastated by the finish. He stormed out of the octagon before Hardy's hand was raised, throwing his mouthpiece out to the crowd in the process. Process. Although it pains us to say, given how bad of a guy Hardy was,
because it just wasn't a good look for Adams. Immediately after the meltdown, Adams apologized for his behavior, admitted he was overcome by emotions. Fortunately for Adams, Hardy's gotten his share of beatdowns in the UFC, and few things are as cathartic than watching Greg Hardy get his butt kicked. And while there's nothing better than watching Hardy get whooped, there's nothing worse than watching a sore loser. It's just so damn cringeworthy, especially after getting knocked out cold. At UFC 203, while fighting against Stipe Miocic, Alistair Overeem did just that. With all due respect, Overeem's an absolute legend, but on this night, he was a baby. During the post-fight interview with Joe Rogan, a few minutes after being sent to buddy by time by Miocic, Overeem claimed that Miocic tapped out early in the first round. Now, Overeem did stagger Stipe with a stinging left hand, and he did apply a guillotine choke, but Stipe definitely did not tap. Numerous replays from countless angles showed that Miocic didn't quit, but Overeem remained steadfast that he felt the champion tap out. Understandably so, boos rained down on Overeem from Miocic's hometown crowd. Even with Rogan pressing and endless video evidence, Overeem would not budge. In fact, it was such an embarrassing meltdown that Rogan began campaigning for the removal of interviews with losing fighters. Not altogether, only those following brutal knockouts. And considering Overeem's uncharacteristic protest, you'd have to agree with Rogan. Speaking of uncharacteristic, fighters from Dagestan are well known for a few things. They're exceptional wrestlers, and above all else, they're stoic. Few things send fear into the hearts of fighters quite like the cold stare of a Dagestani killer. And before October 2018, Khabib Nurmagomedov exemplified an emotionally controlled Dagestani, but then all broke loose at UFC 229. After submitting Conor McGregor, Khabib let his emotions get the best of him. When he released the hold, he got up and immediately raced to the side of the cage, leaped over, and attacked one of McGregor's teammates. McGregor, never one to miss an opportunity for a party, found himself trading blows inside the ring with Khabib's teammates. It took five minutes and dozens of officers to finally bring the melee to an end. At first glance, it was a disgusting meltdown of epic proportions. However, while Nurmagomedov initiated the mess after the fight, McGregor and the UFC are far from innocent in the legendary meltdown. Leading up to the fight, the UFC did nothing as McGregor took shots at Khabib's religion, at his father, and his country. The violent aftermath revealed how promoting fights on the back of ethnic taunts and religious bigotry can have explosive consequences. Oh, and then there was that whole McGregor throwing a dolly into a bus incident, which on its own is definitely an epic meltdown. For Khabib, the bus incident combined with racist bigotry was too much to handle. So, in his defense, we'll call it a meltdown with the cause. And there you have it, fight fans. From all hell breaking loose to a brutal cheap shot after the final bell, those were the biggest meltdowns in UFC history.